You guys want to hang out and watch Mr. Ed? All right, this is the trivia gauntlet. Peyton Gallagher with Carson Breber, Logan Camden, enter the Thunderdome. Gentlemen, we ready to ride the lightning today? Yeah. Yes, yes. Let's get it. You know how the game works already, but we'll tell you anyway. Two rounds on the NBA and NFL. Five trivia questions apiece with a super nerd round directed at each of these individuals based on their particular speciality and then a random round yet to be determined. I know it. They don't. And we'll figure out who's smarter when we count up the points at the end of the day. Guys, we ready for a jump ball? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Logan was already ready, anticipating, had that hand raised. We'll get to it here. A question regarding basketball and football to decide where we start off. The question is, which state is the most recent to have housed both the NFL and NBA MVP winner in a single year? Great question. Uh, Rogers and Giannis, Milwaukee. That's correct. Wow. That's correct. Nice, Logan. Nice. I'm Thank glad our uh, understanding of national geography has improved from <laughs> last Dude, week's random I'm, round. I, I'm not even going to lie, bro. I actually think Trivia Gauntlet has helped with my state knowledge. <laughs> I found out from the comments, apparently it actually is Montpellier, not Montpellier. Yeah. So I went with know. that authentic French pronunciation because mm -hmm. I'm a man of the world. Love that for you, Carson. We'll start, though, in the NFL. Question number one, guys. Which player has the most career seasons averaging five yards per carry in this round has everything to do with running backs? Jim Brown. Oh, my God. Not Jim Brown. Ah, uh, that's a good guess. I am going to say Barry Sanders. Not Barry Sanders. Oh. My next guess is Jamal Charles. That's a good guess because that's the right answer. Let's go. Really? God, he was mm -hmm. the other guy I was considering. I just thought he wouldn't have enough career yeah. seasons, period. Yep. But every year, he was up there. Efficiency. Yep. Such a stupid good playmaker, mm -hmm. man. Uh, the hint for this question was this guy is a streets will never forget player. He did this eight <laughs> times. Eight. Eight. Wow. Yeah, he was the king of this category. Mm -hmm. All right. Logan takes the point. On to question number two. Who is the all-time single-season fantasy points leader among running backs? PPR Ladanian scoring. Tomlinson. Ladanian Tomlinson is correct. Bang. 2006. Untouchable mm -hmm. season. 481.1 points. He averaged 28 points per game in PPR fantasy scoring that year. I'm stupid. Very good. On to question number three. We're moving quickly today, guys. Which NFL running back has appeared in the most career games? Frank Gore? Bang. Wow. Let's go. We're flying today, boys. Dang, Let's go. I was, I was gonna guess I was probably gonna guess Emmett Smith. That's a that's a good poll, bro. Emmett Smith is the most games started. Frank Gore is the most games uh. played at 241. Question number four in a tie ball game here. Two to two. Which NFL running back has the most career seasons with more than 50 catches? I'm hoping this slows you guys down a little bit. Marshall Falk. Not Marshall Falk. Well then I know who it is. I think at least. I'm I hope that, so. I'm thinking about that fullback. Uh, is it Larry Centers? Yeah, it is I Larry it. Centers. Let's go, Dude, bro. I knew it. That was going to be my first guess. I couldn't believe you didn't let that fly, Carson. Bro, I thought that Falk would I know. be the only guy above him. But yeah, those are like the two receiving back kings. Shout he, out. He did this 10 consecutive seasons. Dang. Big miss he, he by th me. He thinks he's James White, man. For real. <laughs> Okay, on to question number five. Only four times, and this one is the hardest one of the batch for sure. Only four times has a team had multiple tailbacks post double-digit rushing TDs in a single season. One of those is D'Angelo Williams and Jonathan Stewart in 2008. That was the easiest of the four. If you can name me any of the other duos, any of those other four, you get credit for the question. I'm going to say Brandon Jacobs and Ahmad Bradshaw. It's not a bad thought, but it's not it's the not correct a bad answer thought. here. It's not a bad thought because you're just thinking about the best backfield oh. by committee. Oh, I have, an, I, have, I have a better guess. I have a better guess than that. Well, hold on, buddy, because it's my turn now. I'm thinking about if Ingram could have done it with anybody because he was in a lot of those great two-back situations. I bet Logan's probably thinking about Priest Holmes and Larry Johnson. No, but not, I don't think actually they, not. They actually overlapped not. at their best nearly enough. That was more of a succession plan. Hey, Peyton, can I ask a question? Does it have to be a running back? 
Uh, yes. These are running yeah, backs okay. for what it's worth. Mm. I was going to say, I mean, you could probably say, like, uh, you know, a rushing quarterback, like Jalen mm-hmm. Hurts. And a, right, know. right, right, right. No, this is all running backs today. Cam and D'Angelo, for sure. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. If Jonathan Stewart and D'Angelo are the easiest, then I think that we have to go further back here. And I'll give you a hint. One of them is within the last five years. The other two are 45 years ago or later. Okay. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Wow. Well, that almost makes me want to guess something silly. <laughs> I feel like I should just let a guess rip. This is not going to be right, but just because you said way throwbacks. Let me get Paul Horning and Jim Taylor. Is that no, right? Carson just didn't do that, bro. Bang! That's crazy. <laughs> That's crazy, bro. That's that was a snipe. Oh my goodness, that was the hardest one. I was hoping Jameer Gibbs and David Montgomery might be the wow. low-hanging fruit this past yeah. year. The other duo was Don McCauley and Lydell Mitchell for the Baltimore wow. Colts in 1975. So three to three heading into the lightning round. That might be the best pull we've had so far, gentlemen. <laughs> hey, um, thanks, man. Shout out to the I, old Packers. We love that. Uh, okay, Logan. In your quest to win one of these, Carson is trying to make himself the biggest obstacle possible as he asks a question firmly in your blind spot once more and wants to know who are the last five running backs to win Offensive Rookie of the Year? Ooh. uh, Did Alvin Kamara win it? Alvin Kamara is one of the five, and again, you get three strikes to get these five correct answers. Um... Last five guys to win offensive rookie. I know you got this, Logan. I actually am not trying to put you in your blind spot. I'm trying to get you in your bag because I felt bad because last week's was really hard. How many How many guys pre-2000 do we got? Uh, Pre-2000, none. Nobody. Okay. Um, Ricky Williams. Not Ricky Williams. It's a little Ooh. bit too far back. That's strike number one. Um... Ricky Williams also actually did not win the award. I'm trying to think. I don't know. Shout out Reg- to Ricky. He was beaten out by Edger and James. I'm trying to think if Reggie won it. Um, Alvin Kamara is the second most recent of these guys, so there is one that was it, closer to now. Uh, Jameer didn't win it, I'm pretty sure. Uh, Shout Eddie out to Lacey. Jameer, Eddie David Lacey Montgomery. is one of them. Correct. Yes. The Let's Munch go. Master himself, Eddie Lacy. That's a big dog, oh big ounce. Bro. When Eddie Lacy and Le'Veon both came out in the same year, Eddie was so raw as a rookie, man. Mm-hmm. That guy was insane. Big. Uh, Mark Ingram dude. goes in the first round of 2011. I don't think he wins it. Man, There's only Saints. one before Lacy. Oh, wow. This is really recent. There's only one before Lacy. Rookie running backs come in and ball, man. Uh, 2005, we have Ronnie Brown, we got Frank Gore. I think uh, this guy is probably the best running back of our lifetimes. That's subjective, but... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All day. All day won it, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's three of the five. Oh, seven. Uh, so we got two more guys sandwiched between... We got one guy between Lacey... Um... I think we just let you cook now. Mm-hmm. Man, I don't... No, 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 that's not going to be right. I was going to say, I was going to say Derrick Henry. I don't think he did it. Did, this is a weird guess. Did, I don't know if I want to let that one rip. Did Philip Lindsay win rookie of the year? He did not. That's strike two. Mm. Shout out to the undrafted Philip Lindsay. Or was he? Yeah, no, he was undrafted. He was undrafted, yeah. yeah. He did have a really good rookie year. Yeah, over no, I... 1,000 yards and nine oh, oh, tutties. Uh, Jonathan Taylor won rookie of the year, right? He did not. That's strike three. Wow. Damn. Who are the other two guys? The correct answers there were Saquon Barkley and Todd Gurley. Those are the players you missed out on. You collect three of the Super Nerd points, and we move along into the NBA round. Don't go anywhere. 6-3 here heading into the NBA round, a round focused entirely on guards. And guys, question number one. Yeah, since the merger... Which guard has the most career NBA rebounds? And Michael Jordan. It's not Michael Jordan. I am pretty sure, unless I am tripping, that at this point it's Russell Westbrook. 
It's not Russell Westbrook. Is it Big O? Is it Big O? Towards the top. No, no it's, it's not Post Oscar merger. Roberts. Is it? Is it Jason Kidd? It is Jason Kidd. Bam! Wow. Yeah. Eight thousand seven hundred and twenty-five career rebounds, just ahead of Russell Westbrook. Yeah, Russ is gonna have that soon. Yeah. I was gonna say, no doubt. Question number two Ooh. here, guys. Which guard is responsible for the most personal fouls in their career? Ooh, this is a good question. I'm going to guess a dumb one. Uh, Patrick Beverly. It's not a stupid guess, but it's not Pat Bev. <laughs> I'm going to guess this guy just based on sheer longevity. Is it John Stockton? It is John Stockton, yes. Let's go. That's what happens when you play 8,000 career mm-hmm. games. And are also just a dirty player. Yeah, true, true, very true. Yeah. 3,942 career fouls. Sheesh. Quick one-two for Carson to start off the category. He's one point behind Logan as we ask question number three, which is this. Which player not named Michael Jordan holds the high watermark for two-point field goals made in a single season by a guard? This is all-time, not just all time. post-merger. In fact, Kobe. it happened five years in the five-year window before the merger, and it's not Kobe. Ooh, Damn, I wish okay. I had shut up before I let you yeah, do that. Yeah, that is a helpful Damn. hint. So uh, the thought that I had in my head was going to be AI potentially just because he wasn't a volume three-point shooter. But now, if we're looking at the five range before, the best scoring season is Nate Tiny Archibald. So I'm going to say that it's him. It's Tiny Archibald, yeah. Yeah, shout out. George Gervin was just behind this, but Tiny Archibald slid in. George Gervin. Michael Jordan. Can I give a quick shout out to George Gervin? Because when I was doing this SGA video last week, I was looking up all the most efficient, like, volume guard scoring seasons ever just by raw field goal percentage. And SGA, number one, him. Then it's just MJ and Gervin for, like, the next 10 spots. MJ, you think of, but George Gervin's making 54% of his shots and scoring 30 a game. Like, shout out to the Iceman, bro. Can People we get a big ups to the Iceman? I mean, yes, absolutely. I had a it. pedophile teacher in high school who had a poster of the Iceman up, and I thought it was the coolest thing. Of course, the next year, he was removed from campus. But the Iceman poster was sick. Virginia right. Squires legend, George Gervin. Virginia man. Squires legend. Moving on. Uh... <laughs> played with the great, played with the great uh, Dave Twardzik for the Virginia Squires. Later would win a title with the Portland Trailblazers. A little Dave Twardzik lore for you guys. Yeah. But you guys well, didn't see that coming. Yeah. Yeah. Question number By the four. way, this wasn't the only pedophile teacher at my school. That's all oh, I'll say. Oh, man. Oh, man. You should Which... read some of the poetry that was written about one of my friends. I won't name who, but let's just say disturbing things. Talking about longing for thighs to touch thighs. Longing to feel your animal warmth. These are actual poems written by a teacher from my high school about one of my good friends. Anyways, whenever you guys are ready. Uh, which guard appeared in all 82 NBA games uh, the most times? Mark John Jackson. Stockton, again. It is John Stockton again. Yeah. Damn, why'd you use Stockton twice, man? <laughs> <laughs> make Logan no is mad at the system. Logan's blaming the system. Don't hate the player, hate the game, man. Don't hate the player, hate the game, man. Damn, dude, I'm getting my ass kicked right now. <laughs> uh... Question number five. I like how that's the thing that you have the strong reaction to. Of what's this dude asked the Stockton question twice, man. What is this? <laughs> he, he is the guard. He is the guard. He's the guy Bro who kind of did the thing the He's most. He's the guard's Bro final boss. Guard. Yeah. All right, you know what? Since we're moving through this so fast, I'm going to ask you guys another question. This one will be a little bit more family friendly. I put out a poll on Twitter last mm-hmm. week asking mm-hmm. who would you rather build around, John Stockton or Reggie Miller? Reggie Thoughts? Miller. I feel, like, I feel like it's got to be Stockton. Okay. Well, make your case. Why would you build around Stockton? Uh, the ability to bring other players into the game and make them better, which makes the job of building the team easier. The fact that he contributes more defensively. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, what you're talking about here is a ball-dominant entry pass merchant who really doesn't move the needle, <laughs> in my opinion. Yeah, I'd rather I would a, rather I'd build rather around Reggie. Better. I would rather build around Reggie, especially if we're thinking about the context of the modern NBA, just because the sort of pass-first point guard archetype, guys who are basically just getting dudes in place and whatnot, 
it's just been devalued and Reggie is the second greatest off ball player we've ever seen. He's one of like the five most efficient volume scores we've ever seen. Bro just cranked out like top quarter offenses, the league without other stars around him for a decade. Give me Reggie, give me Reggie. But I thought it was interesting because all time, most people will say, Oh, Stockton's way higher. Stockton's top 25 all time. Oh, he's the best pure point guard ever. I just don't totally agree. I will say young Stockton when he was really quick, Great basketball player. I mean, he's obviously a great player, but I think he gets overrated because people, A, exaggerate the significance of these longevity marks in terms of just the pure greatness Mm -hmm. of a basketball player when you're talking about peak. And B, people romanticize this like pure point guard archetype Mm -hmm. and they're like, oh my God, Stockton embodies it. When at the end of the day, there's a reason that now the great guards are both high level scoring and playmaking threats because you can just do more to reshape a defense when that's the case. I had to so make that's this, my take. I had to make this exact argument at work the other day when I was talking. I was telling you we were having the GOAT debate about MJ and LeBron, and I was like, dude, MJ walled off all these great players, and I started listing them, and I was like, Patrick Ewing, Charles Barkley, you know, all the guys he walled off. And then I said Reggie Miller, and my boy laughs at me, and he's like, Reggie Miller? He's like, how many times was he even an all-star? And I was like, see, oh, buddy, that's, that's where – I was like, that's where you're wrong, bros. I was like, you're just looking at his – basketball yeah. reference page man you're not getting it uh people didn't even know what they were looking at with reggie bro yeah, they didn't man. even understand what he was doing to defenses they just looked at this guy scoring 20 to 22 points a game and he's not a great playmaker and he's not a real plus defender l all right yeah. have you ever heard of something called gravity have yeah. you ever heard of something called overwhelming scoring efficiency Have you ever heard of, oh my God, I demand two defenders away from the ball and I'm creating four on threes for my teammates, which is just another way of saying gravity. Anyways, let's just move on. I thought it was an interesting conversation. (laughs) I don't think you're wrong to say Stockton, especially if you're looking at their eras, but I would take Reggie. I think Reggie's a great, great floor raiser. Like, how else do you explain that the Pacers are consistently in a lead offense? They're consistently in the playoffs. Doesn't matter who was around him. Those supporting casts changed. Reggie stayed the same. You know, what a bar. That felt like, you Thanks, know, man. when you play your dad to, like, seven and he lets you get the first <laughs> shot. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say that felt like when I asked a question to you guys so that I could answer my own question because <laughs> I just went on, like, a three-minute monologue to a question I asked. Hey, man, I'm happy to be a backboard for you. Uh, question number five. Since the merger, only three guards have ever recorded over a 1,000 assists in a single season. Logan, just for you, John Stockton did it seven times. We're not going to count him. Can you name the two other players who accomplished this? They only did this once each. Russell Westbrook, Oscar Robertson. Nope. No. It's a 1,000 assists, so Magic Johnson did this. Nope. You got to check your numbers on that. (laughs) Steve Nash. Nash. Okay, well, all right, well, then I got the other guys. Isaiah Thomas and Kevin Porter, are those the other two? That is the other two, yes. Wow, did Magic really not? I think his career high is somewhere over 12. Maybe he missed it by literally a handful of assists. Wow. But yeah, those are the two guys who averaged 13. Dude, did Steve Nash Kevin not do this, man? Isaiah. No, he was definitely close. But I don't. Nash never hit 12 assists a game in a season, which you have to do to get to 1,000. I just repeat what the search engine tells me. No, you're probably right. I didn't mean to come on strong with the magic thing. That just I'm getting really my stats team me. on it right now. Uh, okay. Magic Johnson did not do this. 989. 989 yeah very tight margins there very tight margins in this game Carson leading right now heading into the super nerd round eight to five eight to six eight to six heading into the super nerd round you can clinch if you get all five of these correct and the question is minimum 10 games played can you tell me the top five guards with the most playoff turnovers per game in NBA history Ooh we this is a fun one my first thought is russell westbrook he is number three okay my next thought is james harden surprisingly really not on this list james harden single game playoff turnover record holder known high volume high turnover player okay that's interesting would you mind, would it be so terrible to tell me the number that we are looking at as a benchmark? Um, It's in the neighborhood of three-something. I'll give you that. Well, okay. I'm figuring it's high threes. I think it's probably mm-hmm. somewhere. Over three and a half. Over three okay. and a half. 
All right. Uh, the next guy in my mind. Uh, I'm a little bit nervous to guess. Oh, boy, I've got two. I've got two. I have three guys in my mind, <laughs> but I only have two more strikes. I'm going to let this one rip, and the people will say, what? Luka Doncic. Yep, number one. Okay. Tied for number yeah. one, 4.4. 4. For all of the incredible things he does in the playoffs, he does turn the ball over. But that's fair. I don't care if you're giving me 32, 8, and 10 on 60% true shooting. Okay, the other guy, I think Trey Young, his draft class compatriot, will be here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Tied for that's... one as well with 4.4. 4. Heliocentric basketball, bro. It leads to a lot of turnovers. So now, when we're looking at being up in the four range, I'm surprised that Harden isn't here. Good for him, honestly. You got two strikes here to clinch the game. Mm. Do I throw in the towel to make the the random round matter more? That doesn't no. seem like a competitively strong No, decision. you're right. You're right. All right, this is the other guy who I was thinking I'm not as confident about him. Is Allen Iverson here? AI is not on here, so you're down okay. to your final strike. Two guys to get. Okay. Carson, I'll Very interesting. Uh, give you a little bit of a hint. These guys played against each other in the finals. Oh, my goodness. All right, so now uh, I have two guys in mind. I have two guys in mind. I repeat, I have two guys in mind. I'm and just going to let him rip. You know what? There's no use to kill time when when – we still got a random round to play. I'm going to guess it's Isaiah Thomas and Magic Johnson. Isaiah Thomas is not on the list, and as that was your first guess, I will not give you Magic Johnson. Oh. Well, hold it's, on. Yeah, figure out who the other guy is. It's Magic and somebody else. I couldn't believe this guy was this Is high. it Dennis Johnson? No. Well, not Dennis Johnson. This guy, a bit of a single-run playoff legend. A bit of a single-run playoff legend. He's a good player. Really, really imperative to getting the job done. All right, well, so, let's think about everybody who the Lakers play the Sixers in uh, 80, 82, and 83. Mm -hmm. And then they play that's the it. Celtics. No, no, that's it. It's a Sixer? A bit of a single-run playoff legend. Is it Andrew Tony? It is Andrew Tony. Oh, wow. Six. I was not going to get that. Wow. All right, so the game is alive. The yep. game is alive. Logan has to get all five of these questions centered around Quentin Tarantino movies when we come back for the random Let's round. Let's go! Random round time. Logan's got to get them all to keep this thing alive. We'll start, though, with this simple question, guys. What's your favorite Quentin Tarantino movie? Mm. Great question. I, of course, have an answer. I have all the Tarantino movies ranked somewhere. Tarantino is tied for my favorite director. Honestly... Push come to shove, I'm glad you guys asked. I would say he's my favorite director, and here's why. If you're looking at the body of work, how much do I enjoy them movie to movie? Christopher Nolan might have him beat. Christopher Nolan has made five of my, like, 25, 30 favorite movies ever when we're talking about Interstellar, Inception, Memento, The Prestige, Ooh, he did the, the Dark he Knight. Did the Prestige? Mm-hmm. Christopher Nolan is the man. But I really love Tarantino's style, and it's so distinct. So anyways, do you guys want to hear my rankings as of whenever I uh, did this in 2020? Are you pulling you it up? You, you have it on paper? I'm pulling yeah, it up. Yeah, sure. Well, not on paper. Something called a phone. All right, number one, Django Unchained. I stand by that. What an I agree with this picture. take. I agree with this take. What an incredible picture. Leo, best actor ever. Just an incredible performance as Calvin Candy. Number two, Pulp Fiction. Number three, The Kill Bills, volumes one and two. I have them together. Oh, incredible. Number four, Inglorious Bastards, five Reservoir Dogs, six Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, which I rewatched recently. I really love that yeah. movie. Seven, Hateful Eight, eight, Jackie Brown, and now once you're into seven, I really like seven and eight, but they're definitely a step below. Mm -hmm. And then by far the worst, by far the worst, Death Proof, just yeah. a really bad movie, pretty deliberately boring. Didn't work for me. I'm I'm shocked at Hateful Eight above Jackie Brown. I thought Hateful Eight kind of sucked. Really? Really? I yeah. liked Hateful Eight. Yeah, those I are was actually, intrigued. Those are two of my favorite three. I'd say my favorite oh. are Pulp Fiction, Hateful Eight, and Jackie Brown. Um, my favorite all times definitely probably uh, and who's the dude who does a? Uh, he did Snatch. He did a uh, Guy Ritchie. It's Guy Ritchie. Yeah, Guy Ritchie's probably my favorite ever. Uh, Tarantino didn't do Usual Suspects too. That's not a Tarantino no. movie. 
No, but I just watched that again last week. Weirdly Such enough. a banger, man. Such a banger. Well, here's what I'll say. You don't rock little bit usual made by suspects, the twist. Man. Little bit made by the twist. I think it's good, but you see it on like top hundred movies of all time, and I'm like, oh, there's definitely... a little bit of twist inflation there. I don't know. It's definitely one of my. Favorite oh yeah, no. Why don't you give your Kevin Spacey stand take? I'm sure everybody will love that. No. Okay. Uh, question <laughs> number one. <laughs> Which of the perpetrators in Reservoir Dogs presumably survives? Mr. Orange? I don't know, man. Nah, That's not so Mr. Funny. Orange. I can't remember any of the dude's name, so... I probably haven't seen this movie in five years. I'm trying to think. Mr. Pink? I, I mean, they're all colors. Mr. Colors. White? Uh, it was Carson's turn. Logan said the right answer. <laughs> Mr. Pink? <laughs> it is Mr. Pink. Wait, who plays Mr. Pink? Okay, I guess we don't. I know. can tell you, Steve, yeah, who is Steve Buscemi. That's my point, man. I said, all right, Mr. give it to Pink, Logan, bro. Whatever, give it to Logan. He's just letting him rip. <laughs> okay. That's Steve Buscemi's character. I love Steve Buscemi. God, what an odd-looking fellow. How, how do we? <laughs> how do we do, fellow kids? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, if you guys haven't seen The Sopranos, go watch it. Steve Buscemi as Tony Blundetto. Fantastic. Mm. If you guys However, haven't seen it. Steve Buscemi in Grown Ups as the dude in the body God cast. Man. Wow, man. If you guys haven't seen it, yes. Steve Buscemi in Fargo. I love Grown Ups. What a film. <laughs> what are you doing? It's not, it's not on your banger. Dude, Grown Ups is a classic. No, dude. Grown Ups, I do not enjoy. <laughs> no Grown Ups slander will be tolerated, man. Dude, let me tell you something. Adam Sandler is the single most overrated comedian. Oh my actor of all gosh! Time. What yeah. a bad take! <laughs> no! Have you seen bad Jack take. and Jill? Have you seen Jack and yes, Jill? Yes, it's like the worst movie ever. Yeah, awful. Yeah, it's the worst movie ever. Now, what I will say, Logan, to maybe calm down the angry masses, Adam Sandler is one of the great dramatic actors of all Dude, time he's just when a he great decides actor, to be. Period, Uncut Gems, man. all time there, performance. There, there, there was Click. a. There was a click is elite. There was a click down period. Is, click is solid. Click's but also, phenomenal. Punch Drunk Love, Paul Thomas Anderson, Adam Sandler. It's a comedic role, but it's also a dramatic role. He's amazing in it. But when yeah. you're just going to show me like, hey, hey, what if a guy farted? And then I'm supposed to laugh at that for 45 minutes. <laughs> How are you boiling down Adam Sandler <laughs> movies to this, man? There was definitely a know. walk in the desert, though. Like, there was a period where Dude. it was not so good. And then, you know, we had some better Mr. roles recently. Dude. Mr. Similar, Deeds, Big Daddy, man, Happy Gilmore. Similar to Tom Classics, Hanks. bro. Similar to Tom Hanks, I will say, because I dislike these big actors, I avoid some of what with, is considered their best work. You don't rock with Castaway. So, well, Castaway is good. That's like Tom Hanks' one good role. But I wasn't trying to bring in a Tom Hanks conversation. Forrest I was just saying, Gump? You don't rock with Toy Story? I mean, come Forrest on, Gump man. is fine, but it's so goofy. Like, I don't know why that's lauded as like one of the all-time great movies it's like yeah you know i could write about a guy who just goes and does whatever he wants and have tom hanks fly him you know seven out of ten maybe 6.5 i'm not rocking with this take man I'm thinking you guys want to watch real off. cinema let's go watch 12 angry men together dude, 12 huh? angry men's a banger dude we it's should a really good movie let's watch the great escape that's a great movie question number two my grandma used to show me lots of movies from the 50s when i was a boy that was I 1963, wish... The Great Escape, <laughs> with the great Steve McQueen. You guys want to hang out and watch Mr. Ed? <laughs> <laughs> Logan has only ever seen one TV show in his life, and it's Mr. Ed, The Talking Horse, which last aired in 1966. Oh, and I watched Leave it to Beaver, man. And you watched Leave it to Beaver. That's true. So let's just say you're pretty with the times. Which Tarantino character is responsible for the following quote? If you engage in what the federal government calls illegal activity, but what we call just a man trying to make a living for his family, selling moonshine liquor, it behooves oneself to keep his wits. Okay. So let's do a little uh, thinking here, Logan. When we hear moonshine, I'm thinking that that's probably a quote from The Hateful Eight. I'm just thinking about context. I'm thinking about timeline. I'm thinking about setting. I don't know. You I've could seen say Django, hateful, but I don't I've remember I've seen The Hateful Eight a lot, man. I don't remember that quote from that movie. A moonshine salesman? Where else could such a character <sighs> exist? It can't be in any film set in the modern times. I'm trying to think. I, I don't think that's in The Hateful Eight, man. 
I don't remember any character selling shine. I mean, there's... <laughs> It's a good thought, Logan. You're on the right path. I mean, they're stuck. It's in a, not the hateful. So it's yeah, not I was the say, hateful they're stuck way. in a cabin for most of that movie. Uh, well, it's got to be a. I mean, it's got to be a. It's got to be an illegal man. It's got to be a broke guy like trying to make. You know, he's trying to make ends meet. I um, don't think it's Django. When did they run into a moonshine salesman? We know that it's not uh, the great Christoph Waltz. What a performance by him! God, he's good. God. I love him so much. Inglorious Bastards, you have somebody overseas who was once during Prohibition a moonshine man. Is that, am I onto something? Is it Brad Pitt in that movie? Mm -hmm. What's the character name? Lieutenant Bongiorno. 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 Oh my God. Arriva Derchi. Arriva Derchi. I know his name. I actually do know this character's name. I don't I think uh, he might have the best name of any Tarantino character. It's Lieutenant something, right? It is, is Lieutenant it? something. Lieutenant Dan, you got new legs. You got new legs, <laughs> Lieutenant Dan. Initials are A and R. Austin Reeves, give me that. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. You get the point. Oh. I'm inclined to just give it to you. Oh. Austin Rivers, give me that. Hold I'm on, on this is in there right somewhere. Now, this is in there somewhere. Yeah, just keep guessing dudes named Austin. Who Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> Future vice president of the United States, Aaron Rodgers. Lieutenant. You guys are kidding around. I'm trying to remember this dude's <laughs> name because I know it. It's an awesome name. Yeah, it is. If you engage in what the federal government calls illegal activity... But what we call just try, uh, just a man trying to make a living for his family selling moonshine liquor, it behooves oneself to keep his wits. Adam. Uh, no, it's uh, a distinct name. I know it's a distinct name. It is quite name. distinct. Alexander. No, it's not a traditional, like, super American name, right? No. Oh. Uh... Somebody buy me some time here. Peyton, sing a song. No. Dude, okay. let's push this to the next question and make the next one worth two points. Well, no. you're already ahead of me because there's a bonus <laughs> point available on the next question. I want to get this. I might have to call a shot clock violation, but when you say the name, I'm probably going to like throw my water at my screen. Ant Antonio. An Antonio. <laughs> it's or, a punchy uh, name. It's a punchy name. Antoine. This character is from Tennessee, so let that... Maybe steep into the thinking. Andrew. No, the, Andrew. I, I want to say it's one syllable first and last name, or it's 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 short. It's a short it's name. It's two syllable first name, one syllable last name. Okay. Anton. That is not. Damn, man. <laughs> Unfortunately, I keep thinking Adolf well, I guess because Anton of is. what the movie's about, but his name is not Adolf. Not Adolf. That would be an unfortunate that would be twist wild. of irony. Is it Arnold? It's not Arnold. All right, I'll give it in, but I'm going to freak out. Lieutenant Aldo Rain. Oh! Aldo! God, Arnold, I was so close. No point for Carson. All right, yeah, I yeah, know. Of course not, but... Question number three, which is worth two points if you can get the bonus portion of it, and Logan's still alive by that factor that we're inventing into this one. Uh, question number three, which actor has appeared in the most Tarantino movies? Again, bonus point if you can name each of the movies they've been in. Samuel L. Jackson. Samuel L. Jackson's correct. Okay. Django. Yep. Jackie Brown. Yep. Hateful Eight. Yep. How many movies are there in total that he's, he's been in? He's in six, and he doesn't physically appear in all of them. Well, I haven't said Pulp six. Fiction. Mm -hmm. I haven't said Pulp yeah. Fiction, which is the most iconic. Oh, he's in. you already said Hateful Eight, ain't it? I did. Yep. Those are the, the easy so, ones. I'm trying to remember... Out of the remaining movies, we have The Kill Bills. We have Death Proof with Kurt Russell. He's we a have... cameo actor in one of these, and he is a voice actor, a narrator alone. In the He's other. in Jackie Brown, ain't he? I already said that. He said Jackie Brown. Um... Those are all the ones that he has big roles in. All right, let, let, me, let, me, let me clean this up. Let me clean this up. I feel like, does he have a narrator role in Kill Bill? He is in Kill Bill 2, but he is not the narrator. 
Oh, really? Who does he play in Kill Bill 2? He is an organ player for like two seconds, apparently. Oh, that's a cameo role. Okay. And then the last movie that he's in, he's not in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Mm-hmm. Nope. I really don't think he, he he does even a voiceover in Inglorious Bastards. Nope, he's a narrator. Really? Mm-hmm. Oh, all right. Well, that 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 makes sense, I guess. So don't give me That's the bonus your ball game, point. kids. Yeah, yeah, but you, you don't know, have to rub We it play in to the face. finish. We play to the finish okay. here. The question number four: uh, There is an allusion to the state of Tennessee in almost all of Tarantino's movies. Name a city in the Volunteer State mentioned in a Tarantino film. Knoxville. Knoxville is correct. He was. That's what I was going to say. Born high probability in my hometown, Knoxville, Tennessee, and that's Shout the out. reason why. And he um, worked at the movie store. The blockbuster. No, not the blockbuster, but a movie store, and that's where he cultivated his love of cinema and feet. <laughs> <laughs> and also the N word. And that's your Quentin Tarantino fun fact of the day. Mm-hmm. Carson Carson's forever. on one today, man. Can we get this Carson every episode, man? I'll just keep it a buck, bro. <laughs> Why didn't he shout out Oneida, where my grandfather is from? Oneida, the know, finest man. city in East Tennessee, huh? Really should have. Really should have. Uh, the other answers that would have been acceptable here, Knoxville was in Pulp Fiction. Maynardville, Tennessee is where Lieutenant Ooh. Aldo Rain is from. Uh, Oak Ridge is mentioned in Kill Bill 2. Gatlinburg. Shout out. In Django and Chain and Chattanooga, Tennessee, in the hateful eight. Oak Ridge, where t- where T Higgins went to school, correct? Yep. Where we were they just talking also, about that the other day, Baden. Um, developed the atomic bomb. Uh, question number five. You know, Oak Ridge known for T Higgins above. That was not miles. an Oppenheimer. Nope, nope, it wasn't. All right, wow. question number five. Tennessee erasure. Sad. I know. I know. They don't want to ever give us credit. Quentin does, though. Yeah. Uh, question number five. This was supposed to be a photo finish question. Um, hopefully, you guys can get it quickly, though. Which Tarantino character delivered the famous quote, Zed's dead, baby. Zed's dead. Oh, Bruce Willis, man. It is Bruce Willis. The character is named what? Ooh. Oh, my God. What is that character's name? I'm trying to imagine his girlfriend with the vaguely European accent saying his name. Mm-hmm. What does she what, say? Oh, what an awesome scene, dude. I was watching that a couple yeah. weeks ago. Yeah. Baby. Yeah. Crazy. God, I love that movie. With, uh, oh, with what's that guy's name? Uh, cinema. The dude that uh, passed away. He uh, He's no longer with us. Um, really big guy. He, he did Marcellus? Yeah. Oh, that guy died? Or not, not Marcellus, no, the other guy. What's that guy's name? The really big guy? In Pulp Fiction? Yeah. Uh, who he owes because he didn't fix the fight? Tiny it's listener Marcellus. is in Pulp Fiction, ain't it? Yeah. Anyways, this character's name... Oh, boy. Oh, yeah, Marcellus my. Wallace, yeah. Yeah, Marcellus I Wallace. Just, I thought you were about to say Marcellus Wiley. Yeah, that's, about to <laughs> that's that's what I kept thinking. That's why I just said his first name, because I was like, Marcellus Wiley is coming into my head, and I know that it is not Marcellus hey, Wiley. What's this, what's this guy's initial Marcel name? Marcel Darius. I only know the first name, and it's a B. Oh, yeah, Bruce, because it's Bruce Willis. Mm. No. Ba- baby. <laughs> Shout out Glenn Davis, driver. though. Was apparently yeah. a porn star for a little bit there. What? You guys didn't see that? Peyton, where would I even know, find Peyton, something like that? Peyton, that? why do you know that, bro? It, it was on Twitter the other day. No way. Send yeah. a link you won't. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Not that link. Oh. Um, I don't care, then. I think I sent this in our group chat. Boris, Brad, Baxter, Benjamin... Brutus. I don't think it can be like a normal name. Like Benito. It's, a, it, it's an old school name. Baron. Berthold. It's not Bailiff. <laughs> Shout out AOT. I don't know this one. I'm going to say uh, Brigham in, in honor of Brigham Young. I was going to say Brooks. Brooks. I don't know, man. It's Brooks. Brooks. Butch, Butch. Uh, it's classic. You come on, you got a fighter for a son. You got to name him Butch. 
Mm-hmm. You get a fighter or a bulldog, you name him Butch, everybody knows that. Or Spike. <laughs> Butch's got hands. Um, Logan doesn't. Butch. Oh, Damn! Oh, and six. Let's not view it those ways. Let's view it as six and zero, oh, like I'm MJ. They said I couldn't go left, so I did. I'm here to cut through your positivity with just a beam of sheer negative energy, folks. That's what I'm here for. Damn. No Logan looks displeased. Here. I'm just defeated, man. Damn. Bro. Logan was texting me before this. He was, you know, I got to lock in. I'm ready to go. So close last week. Uh, not so close this week. Your day will come. Your time will come. And when it does, you will be knighted as one of the noble men of this country that you are. And I will stand beside you hand in hand. Dude, I feel and like I will Weeb, give I, you my sword. I feel like Weeb Eubank right now, man. Dude, my career winning percentage so like just made a Weeb Eubank percent, bro. I feel like uh, Richie Kotite, bro. Win the Super Bowl? Didn't he win Super Bowl three? Wasn't yeah, he the head actually, coach? He's actually one of the most efficient coaches ever. I feel like so Richie chill with Weeb right Eubank. Now, you feel like fucking Jim Caldwell. Dude, Jim Caldwell's not even a bad coach, bro. Look up Jim Caldwell's career winning percentage. Jim I'm gonna get Caldwell's my. Not even that bad, bro. Jim Caldwell, career winning percentage. Yeah. I guess I was yeah, you're right. Detroit wasn't even that bad when he was there. Alright. there, Che, folks. You're you, 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 more like Jim Tom Sula. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh man, I haven't heard more that like name. Jim in Tom years, Sula. Bro. The ultimate. More like Rob Chudzinski. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on my urban, yeah. I'm on my Urban Meyer shit, man. More like more like more like more like more like Marvin Lewis. More like Hugh Jackson. Don't hang too far. I don't know, dude. Hugh Jackson's kind of an apt comparison right too now, bro. Too far. Hugh ja what, are you, what are you, his son-in-law? Hugh Jackson <laughs> said something off of you? He Hugh went Jackson. Oh, in thirty. He went Hugh, one in thirty-one in two years. I was gonna I say know. Hugh Jackson is a that's sport, two, like, uh, two that's different two, spots. Yeah, you too. can't. Oakland yeah. too, man. You, I, I cannot. Um, Stand by without protesting such aggressive. Eleven forty four and one, dude. Eleven forty four. Look, bro, and one. if you're gonna come at my buddy Logan like that for I, being I, zero and six, then you need to hold Hugh Jackson <laughs> accountable for being one and thirty one. I thought you were calling Logan Hugh Jackson. I'm like, we're yes, a long he was. Way from that. That's an app. Yeah, we're a long, oh, wait, a long I was. way from that. <laughs> oh, I thought you were defending I, I, Hugh Jackson. How, how? No, no, never. How the turntables? Oh. How the turntables? Uh, yeah. So well, let's end this episode now. Carson wins again, 6-0. We'll see you next week.